Hey folks, Mark Waldrick from the Allegan Conservation District. Uh, wanted to put a little introduction on this video. I went to uh, Ag Expo at the Michigan State campus on, uh, in 2013 and visited with a couple of different vendors about vertical tillage. Uh, vertical tillage is the notion that we're going to do some uh, residue sizing and we're going to fracture the soil a little bit, but we're not going to mix it necessarily or at least we're not going to mix it very much. And I'm, I'm a big fan of the vertical tillage. I think it solves a lot of the problems we have in both uh, conventional agriculture, where we bury too much of our residue and have way too much soil erosion. But I'm also seeing a lot of our no-till guys looking at the vertical tillage, especially when they're doing corn on corn, because they just cannot handle the amount of residue generated uh, by two years of corn in a row. Uh, and a lot of our dedicated no-till guys are buying these vertical tillage tools. Uh, we're going to look at the Mandaco Twister and also the Landall VT Disc. Uh, the Mandaco uh, has an adjustable gang angle, something I'm kind of a fan of. I think uh, and any of our tools certainly uh, can benefit from a little adjustment at, at different times to react to field conditions. But our Landall our guy is going to make the case for a fixed gang angle. Uh, so. Take a look at these, and uh, certainly we'll be continuing to watch vertical tillage with interests uh, as we get around talking to our farmers about soil erosion and soil management. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and uh, jump right into the Mandaco video. All right, we're here with Stu from Mandaco, and go ahead and tell me why this is a good vertical tillage tool better than the rest. Okay, well there's, there's several patented features. First of all, I guess Penetration is always a concern in, in hard conditions, especially in the fall. You want to cut through that residue, size up the residue, and you want to be able to, to lift your tillage. There you get into the vertical tillage concept. It's also fracturing the soil, especially in the spring when you're going to get a better, promote better root mass lower. So your, your ground is actually fractured quite a bit more deeper than uh, the actual depth of the culture itself. If you compare uh, tillage like a disc. You're going to see a high angle with a coned uh, disc and it's going to it's going to promote a lot of uh, smearing and slabbing. And, uh, it's kind of opposite of what we're trying to do with vertical tillage is that we're not creating a hard pan situation. The moisture is going to permeate a lot faster into where the root mass needs to be. This machine uh, we need weight in order to penetrate sometimes during tough conditions. All of our tubing, you can see by the ro rounded corners, that this tubing is, is quite thick. Uh, it's half inch steel, and it, this machine with the attachments will average about 800 pounds a foot. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the companies out there have to add tractor weights or, or wing leveling devices hydraulically. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is uh, hydraulic actuated uh, gangs. We can go from zero to seven degrees. Front gang and back gang are independent of each other. So it's actually the, the operator in the tractor cab that determines the finish that he wants based on the different angles that he chooses. So they're all independent that way. Uh, once you uh, reach your depth or, or the, the angle that you like, we prefer that you pin uh, the cylinders uh, the, the gangs together so that we don't have the hammering against the hydraulic cylinder and sure. then having seal bypassing eventually. On the cultures themselves, these are special uh, hub bearings. Uh, we're using a, a cone and uh, cup system just like your vehicle uh, axles and tapered roller bearings. Now that's very important because when you have a side load uh, a tapered roller bearing will, will last a lot longer than just a, your conventional uh, ball bearing. And so that uh, this requires grease only twice a year. It's a lot like your automotive bearings. and it's, it's the new thing. Now here's the other thing is maintenance. If you look here, uh, you have one half inch bolt per coulter assembly. So you just remove the bolt and then pull the whole assembly out. If you have a replacement, replace it and you have almost zero downtime. And this you can bring to your workbench and work on it on a rainy day type thing. So maintenance is a real, real plus on this design. Uh, anytime you change your coulter angle, you're going to have some side load in. The machine will want to skewer or, skew or walk. Mm -hmm. how, we, how we change that is that we've got cylinders from your frame to your hitch. You just bump that one direction or the other and it re-levels the machine. This is our, this cylinder here? Correct. This is what we're talking about here. 
So you can level this from the cab on the fly or? Right. Okay. Right. So it takes a little practice, but you've got total control from the tractor cab. Very good. You know, it seems, this may be a, a little broad, but it seems to be two basic kinds of vertical tillage tools, the ones with the adjustable gangs and the fixed gang angle. Um, talk about the advantages of being able to adjust the gang, especially in the context of a conservation tillage system. You know, are you are you feeling that you guys have more flexibility, for example, on end rows and we're, things like that? We're allowing that? the operator to make the decision on what kind of job that he wants to do. There are times that uh, you know vertical tillage as, as a rule is just lifting it up and putting it back down but if you're looking to size up your residue especially in the fall and you want to have some uh, uh, rotting or decomposing uh, it, it pays to put a little bit of dirt on top of that and it also pays to put dirt on top of your residue so it doesn't blow so bad and fill up your dishes so there's a lot of benefits seven degrees uh, is our maximum pitch on these gangs, and it, it isn't a lot. You, know, you look at discs, you're looking at up to 22 inch, uh, 20, 22 degree, degrees, which is a pretty sharp pitch. So, like I say, the hydraulics were mainly so that the operator has a choice of how he wants wants his finish to be. So you can kind of go from uh, just sizing and chopping with a, a true vertical tillage thing. To basically all the way to a light disking if you've got a little bit of repair to to do to a field or well yeah I, I guess you're gonna you're gonna move a very little amount of dirt you know like I say some people want the dirt on top of their residue to uh, hold what, it what about but, cleaning up uh, cleaning up ruts and tracks and things like that uh, you're gonna see some of that but it's not gonna be much advantage that way you're not okay. moving a lot of soil horizontally it's, uh, you'll see some of it at full pitch okay but uh, not a lot. Okay. Hey, Stu, thanks for your time today. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. That's Mark Ludwig from the Allegan Conservation District. I'm here at the uh, 2013 uh, Ag Expo with Corey from Landall and talking about their new vertical tillage tool or newer ver vertical tillage tool, I guess. Uh, Corey, why don't you give us just your, your thoughts on the role of vertical tillage on a modern farm system, how it fits into conservation tillage, and how the land all compares to some of the other tools. Uh, from what I'm seeing and the guys are uh, doing um, the vertical tillage stuff, which is, you know, more of this vertical tillage is the disc version. They do make a couple different versions of vertical tillage with the straight blades or whatever. This system here works into a guy that has got a lot of high residue, trying to work residue and dirt together. That's the key with the breaking stuff down. you got to get it worked in, mixed up, and get it rotten down as quick as you can. And in the fall, particularly behind the combine, where you can get that soil temperature at that 50 degrees and above to get the, the microorganisms to break down. Once it gets going to that, then by the springtime, it broke down and then guys can no-till into the ground if that's that's their case, if they want to no-till. Um, this is basically a higher speed tool. You're going to get into the 7-8 mile an hour range. You're cutting, you're, you're sweeping residue behind the disc, the blades are going to throw in the dirt, mixing residue and mixing dirt together to get it broke down. Seven inch blades facing, uh, low concavity blades, 22 inch blades, we're 10 degrees on our gang angle. Um, so basically we're half of a disc, we're half of the gang angle, we're half of the, the, the blade concavity of it. And we, we talked a little bit about fixed gang angle versus uh, versus one you can adjust on the go or you know hop off the tractor and adjust and you were you were pretty adamant that you like to see the fixed gang angle uh, you know I guess a lot of our farmers like to be able to noodle around and adjust things why don't you talk a little bit about why Landall went with a fixed gang angle and what we, we you think they get to. a lot of gang angles when we started this tool we started with our disc arrow which is 20 degree front 18 degree back we started messing and, and welding gang bars on and find the right gang angle. Basically what we come up with was, like I said, half of the disc. So the gang angle we've got mixes and cuts the residue the best and gets it laid down flat and level. And that's the key is getting it laid back down nice and flat so the guys ain't worried about a rough situation when they either plant into it or harvest into it then. So, um, you know, like I say, we've got basically, we prototyped a lot of different angles, a lot of different options on the back. Now we finally come up with this tool that 
works the best in the, of all matters of what guys are looking to do. So this is this is kind of the the ideal gang angle you think for the yes. uh, for a true vertical tillage. Correct. How about uh, you know some of our guys, especially we've got these grain carts with the big tracks on them. You can really rut the dickens out of the end rows. Is this a tool to get on there for cleaning up head rows, headlands, you, you end rows? Level it out. You're not going to fill that much of a hill to valley. You're only going to fill about a four to five inch hill to valley in one pass. So because it doesn't pull and roll dirt, it's just cutting and sweeping, see. So, you know, to try to get it leveled off, you can do that with, but with, like you say, with tractors and trucks and stuff packing, you've got to reset the soil density. You're going to have to get that broke part, either an inline ripper or chisel plow or something to get that broke up again, because you'll never grow a crop on it if it's packed down. Okay. So not necessarily that tool. We, we were talking a little bit about conservation tillage or about uh, no-till systems. I had told you I've, I've got some guys I work with who uh, uh, true no-tillers, dedicated no-tillers. They've all gone out and bought some vertical tillage tools, including the Landall in a couple of cases. Where, where do you see the kind of the future of agriculture going? You know, we, we look out 10 years, we've got these no-till guys, we've got this soil health emphasis we're seeing more and more. Are we going to see more of our conventional guys looking at this vertical tillage and kind of heading that way? Or, you know, on the flip side, are we going to see our no-till guys maybe backing off a little bit and coming toward vertical tillage over time? Yeah, they're going to be actually probably, I see it more tillage. I'm, I'm seeing more and more tillage all the time. For one, you're getting Roundup resistant weeds. You've got to take care of them. The only way you're going to get rid of them is with a tillage piece. Mare's tail is a prime example of that. Yeah. Um, you know, incorporating your residue. The residue is getting worse now. I mean, the corn stalks are getting bigger all the time, you know, and you, you got to work incorporate that residue in with that dirt to get it broke down. To no-till into that heavy residue, you can't do it anymore because you're just planting into residue. Yeah. So you got to get planted into dirt. Are you bumping up against Palmer Amaranth in any of your territory? Or no. Is this having any control on that or hearing anything about that? I heard a lot about that, no. Okay. No. So, um, you know, like I said, really with you know the, the tillage practices I'm seeing is a lot more just because of the weeds around the resistance of the, the round is what it is. You know, they've got to get it worked down and the guys will say that you know one pass with this will take care of the mare's tail system instead of trying to go in and spray it and keep on top of it. Once a mare's tail gets to a certain point, you cannot kill it. Yeah, that's a tough one, isn't it? Yeah. So. Hey Corey, thanks for your time today. You really bet. appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate it.